The Battle of Midway took place on June 4, 1942 in the Central Pacific. It was initiated by Admiral Yamamoto whose primary strategic goal was the elimination of America's carrier force, which had evaded the attack on Pearl Harbor six months earlier. These carriers had become an increasing threat to Japanese ambitions ever since. The aircraft launched from a carrier had bombed the Japanese homeland in April and thwarted the Japanese attempt to take Port Moresby during the Battle of the Coral Sea in May. Yamamoto decided to end this menace once and for all by drawing the U.S. carriers into a battle on favorable terms to the Japanese Navy. Yamamoto selected Midway, a tiny atoll approximately 1,300 miles from Hawaii as the setting for what would become one of the most decisive battles of World War II. If the Japanese could take Midway it would put them within striking distance of the main U.S. Pacific Fleet base at Pearl Harbor. This led the Japanese into thinking that the Americans would have no option but to do everything they could to defend the island. Midway also had the benefit of being lightly defended and was relatively close to the Japanese home island naval bases. The Japanese planned to split their forces into four widely dispersed task forces led by the carrier strike fleet which would clear the way for the following Midway occupation forces. After Midway had been invaded and the air base taken over, they would transfer shore-based aircraft to operate from the airfield to augment the strength of the four fleet carriers which would be lying in wait for the American counter-attacking fleet sailing from Pearl Harbor. What Yamamoto did not know was that the U.S. had broken parts of the main Japanese naval code. U.S. crypto analysts were able to provide Admiral Nimitz with a complete Japanese naval order of battle and determine the date of the attack as 4th to 5th of June. As a result, the U.S. had the critical advantage of entering the battle with the knowledge of where, when, and in what strength the Japanese would appear during the battle. In command of the carrier strike force was Vice Admiral Nagamo. He had at his disposal 248 aircraft distributed between four carriers. By 4.30 on June 4, Nagamo was in position to launch his initial attack on Midway Island, consisting of 72 bombers, escorted by 36 Zero fighters. Time, he launched his eight search aircraft. Due to mechanical issues, one of them launched 30 minutes late. As Nagamo's bombers and fighters were taking off, 11 Catalina flying boats were launched from Midway to run their own search patterns. At 5.34, a Catalina reported sighting two Japanese carriers. Back at Midway unescorted bombers headed off to attack the Japanese carriers, the fighters remaining behind to defend Midway against the Japanese air strike they knew was coming. Midway's radar picked up the enemy at a distance of several miles and interceptors were scrambled. Most of the 26 Midway-based Marine fighters were outdated Brewster Buffaloes and were no match for the modern Japanese Zeros. Of the 26 fighters that intercepted the Japanese strike force, 15 were destroyed and 9 heavily damaged, only 5 enemy aircraft were shot down in return.
American anti-aircraft fire was intense and accurate. Of the 108 Japanese aircraft involved in this attack, 11 were destroyed with 14 heavily damaged. The initial Japanese attack did not succeed in neutralizing Midway. American bombers could still use the airbase to refuel and most of Midway's land-based defenses similarly remained intact. Japanese pilots reported to Nagamo that a second aerial attack on Midway's defenses would be necessary if assault troops were to go ashore by June 7. Having taken off prior to the Japanese attack, 54 Midway-based bombers made several attacks on the carrier strike force but failed to make a single hit. Japanese repelled these attacks for the loss of three fighters while destroying 17 bombers. In accordance with Yamamoto's strict orders, Nagamo had kept half of his aircraft in reserve armed with anti-ship ordnance should any American warships be located. At 7.15, with none of his reconnaissance aircraft having reported sighting of any ships and the Midway Strike Commander stressing the need for another attack on Midway, Nagamo decided to disobey his orders and instructed that his reserve planes be rearmed with high-explosive bombs for use against Midway. While Nagamo was busy changing his ordnance, 155 nautical miles to his northeast, the American Carrier Task Force under the overall command of Admiral Fletcher was in the process of launching a strike against him. Having benefited from the Catalina sighting reports earlier in the morning, Fletcher had ordered his carriers to close at full speed to within striking distance of the Japanese fleet and launch as soon as was practical. Therefore American aircraft proceeded to target immediately, rather than waste time assembling a large strike force. Consequently, American squadrons were launched piecemeal and proceeded to the target in several different groups mostly without fighter cover. Rearming had been underway for about 30 minutes when, at 0740, Nagamo received a report that the delayed scout plane had sighted a sizable American naval force to the northeast. Although the report made no mention of carriers, Nagamo quickly reversed his order to rearm the bombers and demanded that the scout plane ascertain the composition of the American force. Another 40 minutes elapsed before the scout plane finally radioed the presence of a carrier within the task force. At 9.20 the first American carrier squadrons arrived over the Japanese strike fleet. In the next 45 minutes a total of 41 unescorted Devastator torpedo bombers attacked the Japanese carriers. The Japanese Combat Air Patrol, Flying Zeros, made short work of the slow, underarmed Devastators. Thirty-four of the torpedo bombers were shot down, a few managed to get within range of their targets before dropping their torpedoes forcing the Japanese carriers to make sharp evasive maneuvers, but all of their torpedoes either missed or failed to explode. At 10.25, three Dauntless dive bomber squadrons appeared high above the Japanese fleet. 
Japanese combat air patrol having attacked the torpedo bombers at sea level were now out of position and many of the Zeros were low on ammunition and fuel. This meant that the dive bombers had an unmolested attack run. Each squadron selected a carrier to attack. The Japanese carriers were especially vulnerable at this time because armed Japanese strike aircraft filled the hangar decks. Fuel hoses snaked across the decks as refueling operations were hastily being completed, and the repeated change of ordnance meant that bombs and torpedoes were stacked around the hangars. Within six minutes, three carriers were ablaze, as raging fires spread through the ships. All three carriers remained temporarily afloat, as none had suffered damage below the waterline. All three carriers were eventually abandoned and scuttled. The sole surviving Japanese aircraft carrier wasted little time in counter-attacking. attack wave, consisting of 18 dive bombers and 6 fighter escorts, scored 3 bomb hits on the Yorktown which blew a hole in her deck and snuffed out all but one of her boilers. Damage control parties were able to temporarily patch the flight deck and restore power to several boilers within an hour, giving her a speed of 19 knots and enabling her to resume air operations. efforts had been so effective that the Japanese pilots in the second wave which struck an hour later, consisting of 10 torpedo bombers and 6 escorting zeros, assumed that they must be attacking a different carrier. Yorktown was hit by two torpedoes, she lost all power and developed a 23 degree list to port and was abandoned. Two days later she would be found by a Japanese submarine and sunk. Late in the afternoon, the remaining two American carriers launched a strike consisting of 24 dive bombers against the last surviving Japanese fleet carrier. 
despite a strong combat air patrol of more than a dozen zero fighters, they scored four bomb hits, keeping her ablaze and unable to operate aircraft. As darkness fell, evil attempts at controlling the blaze were halted and the crew evacuated. She finally sank 9 o'clock the following morning. The Battle of Midway was a decisive victory for the Americans. Never again would the Japanese launch a major offensive in the Pacific. Subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon so you don't miss the next video.